welcome to livealittlehigher.com. This week we start the fifth book of the Torah, the book of Devarim, which is also known as Mishneh Torah, and uh, also known as the Deuteronomy. It's the last book, it's actually the biography of Moshe Rabbeinu's life, it's written in first person. Although it's also given by Hashem through Moshe, but this is his farewell address to the Jewish people before he dies, it's a reminder of their purpose in life, of why they came out of Egypt, what's the purpose for them into entering the land of Israel. He rebukes them for the things that they didn't do right, and he praises them for the things they did. And it's actually a very, it's like a recopula it's like a review of the other from Exodus on. So we see from Rabbi Itzhak Ginsberg, very interesting, uh, insights on Devarim, on this book, and it says that in the Torah portion of Devarim, Moses begins his final speech and directed to the Jewish people before they enter the land of Israel under Yeshua's leadership. So he's saying goodbye, it's a farewell, he's preparing them to enter into the land. And Moshe reminds the congregation how difficult had been for him to bear the responsibility of the people alone, like he's reminding them like, 40 years was a tough job with you guys, like you were quarrelsome, you were always looking for fights, you were a chutzpahdik. Uh, I really had a, it was a, it was really a, a, a big, big nisayon to bring you to this moment in, 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 in history, and it was a big responsibility. So he is explaining to them that to help him in this monumental task, Hashem, told him to look for men that will help him, to look for judges. And this was actually um, an advice that his father-in-law gave to him when he saw him counseling all these people and he would never finish. And he said, this is ridiculous. You cannot be doing this. You need to appoint judges. And Hashem said, yes, you have to appoint judges. So the, the, he sought righteous men who are wise, who are intelligent, perceptive and known, and, um, and, they, and accepted by the tribe as worthy of being a judge. So Moses continues to relate how he appointed the men chosen by the people, the people. However, it was a democracy, the very states that they were men who are wise and known. And the missing adjective implies that in practice, the judges who Moses elected were not perceptive. So Rabbi Itzhak Ginsberg gives us a whole um, shiur on how to understand our intellect and how to understand our, our realities, our perceptions of reality, our mindsets, and how we have to really be with other people when we're there for them and we're going to be counseling them or giving advice to them and how the brain works and what's important. So he says that wisdom, wisdom, chokma, we have these three faculties in our brain, chokma, bina, and das, and chokma is wisdom, bina is understanding, and das is knowledge. So this wisdom, this, um, this chokma, is actually a, a flash of lightning. It's something that comes like this, it, pops into your head, comes from nowhere, it's nothing, something from some, it's something from nothing, and, um, and you, you sometimes get these ideas, you don't even know where they're coming from, and in contrast, understanding, which is uh, Bina, is the power to develop the initial insight, to reveal all its details, this is to come and draw it down, that initial flash of lightning, you have to make it something, right? So yeah, beautiful, you can have a thousand ideas, but if you don't make them work through your understanding, they're gonna just disappear. So Rashi interprets perception as the ability to understand one thing from another, something from something. So first we have something from nothing, it just popped in, into our head out of nowhere, and then understanding is something that makes it into something. So the Rebbe, Rabbi Menachem Mendel Schneerson of blessed memory, he talks about the Arizal, the Arizal, and today is the fifth of Av, and actually it's his yurt site. Uh, this was Isaac Luria of blessed memory. He was a very, very important rabbi in Sfat. He was a Kabbalist, 
the, and, um, and he says that the Arizal outlines two levels of understanding. There's two different levels of understanding that a person can achieve. So the first level is the power of deduction, and a person studies a general rule and is able to deduce the details from the rule. So yes, if you have a business and you have someone that works the computer and you need a chart to show your, your buyers a certain uh, thing in your business, you're gonna give your guy, your computer guy, you're gonna tell him, oh, I need a chart on this and this and this information. And he has the, the know, he knows, the, he has the know-how. He knows how to work the computer, he knows how to use Excel, he knows how to put the chart in, he knows the numbers, he knows what he's selling. He, know, he has this knowledge and so he's able to produce something from his knowledge. And, um, and a person studies a general rule and is able to deduce the details from that rule. In this case, the individual is inspired by others to develop their ideas and implement them in reality. So this worker, this guy, this, this person that works for this CEO of a company, he takes the ideas of the, of the CEO and he, makes the, he brings them down. He, he brings them into understanding. But this, this computer guy, this computer genius, has one flaw, and that is that he's not able to innovate on his own. He needs the information from the other guy. He cannot come with his own ideas. And you know what, there's nothing wrong with it. There's people who have ideas and there's people who know how to implement the ideas. Uh, not everybody knows how to implement them and not everybody has the ideas. And that's why it's good to have partnerships, socios. So the level of perception su suffice by Betzalel. Betzalel was the, the artisan, the architect that built the Mishkan, was this level. Moshe Rabbeinu gave him the measurements that were given to him by, by Hashem, he gave him exactly dimensions, materials, measurements, everything as Hashem wanted it, and he did exactly what he was told to do. He was able to understand it and implement it, but he, he was not a, a person that had innovation. So the second higher level of understanding is a penetrating form of meditation. And by meditating on the object of his study, the truly perceptive individual is able to innovate new ideas. So this is a person that is able to innovate, to bring new things. Uh, the, the, the CEO tells the guy that's going to make a chart, oh, you know what, I need this and this and this and this. And then the guy that makes the chart tells the CEO, oh, you know, I think it would be better that we do this column in green and this column in blue and this column in red. And maybe we can highlight this here and maybe we can do this here. And he comes with his ideas. So in Hasidut, the type of revelation is achieved by deeply contemplating the, the, the imminent light until one perceives the surrounding light. Those, this is two concepts in Kabbalah, of the indwelling light and the surrounding light. And Hashem creates the world with these two lights. One is one that is imbued in the world. It's like a glass of water that's containing the water inside. It's what it's inside. So the natural order of the world is that, that, that um, uh, sovev kolamim is how it's called. It's, a, it's the imminent light. And then there's a, 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 an infinite light that surrounds, which is, a, I don't remember the name in Hebrew, but it's the surrounding light, which is the infinite experience of God. So we have, in our realities, we have these two. It depends which one you connect to. You can be living in the natural order, with the water in the glass and this is what I see and this is what I perceive and this is my reality. And then you can jump that reality and then start questioning yourself and say, okay, there's a world, you know, Hashem created a world and we have to eat. And why do we have to eat? Why did he make us to eat? Like we could have been like the phones, we could charge ourselves during the night and that's the end of it. But then a person would say, well, wow, Hashem wants us to do brahas when we eat. He wants us to elevate the food we're eating. So he created all this food, not to give us food, but to make us be able to make a dwelling place for him in this world. And this is the two types of perception. So this is also true if the object of our study is another person, by contemplating another individual with compassion, we suddenly come to a new realization about him or her. So yes, 
you can be in a party, your friend comes in, he has a bad face, he's not so nice, he's not being very kind to anybody, like he's being quiet and in a corner and he doesn't look very happy. And you can say, oh, what's wrong with this guy? You know, he's not so nice or whatever, what, what's wrong with him? That's one perception. And another perception would be to say, okay, you know, compassion, okay, he's acting out of his, out of his norm something happened to him. I'm sure something happened to this person. It, he's not being himself. And so, so we come to a different realization and the person, instead of getting insulted because the friend didn't come to say hello, will go up to the friend and hug him and say, everything okay? And so the Arisal, for example, was so perceptive. He had such perception um, towards towards and sensitivity to the, towards people and the world that when a person came to him with a problem he was able to see uh, from his first reincarnation he could see everything about this person so he would tell him okay you know what you have this is your tikkun this is what you have to correct in this world until you don't correct this character trait you're gonna be experiencing these things all your life and 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 so on so the judges were wise, they were well versed in Torah law and thus worthy of being judges. They were men of good deeds and virtuous repute. Yet they lacked the ability to penetrate the psyche of those who approached them. And the judges could not modify their response to reflect the deeper needs of those under their authority. So Torah knowledge, impeccable character traits and righteous actions are important. Yes, if you're gonna have a judge, you're gonna have a rabbi, you're gonna have any leader of anything, of an organization, he needs to be righteous, he needs to be wise, he needs to have good qualities, good midot, it's very important. But these qualities are not enough to make a good counselor. So if a person is gonna give advice to other people, he's a counselor, he's a mentor, he's a therapist, he's a coach, a life coach, he needs to have a deep understanding of human character and he has to be perceptive. He has to have perception. He has to be compassionate. So the judges were appointed even though they did not have this quality and perception may be dispensable in a judge or in a rabbinical authority, such individuals must judge according to the reality that they see. A counselor should carefully nurture his essential quality. And this is important not only parents, parents, we need to be perceptive with our children. You know, parents have no time, no, no uh, patience to sit and listen to the kid see what's really going on, to sit in the table at night if the kid is acting weird. Instead of, of reprimanding the kid, go deeper. How was your day? Tell me, what is your friend uh, doing? Or get it out of him. Something is going on. So Moses sought wise men who are also perceptive, those who can accomplish the dual task of being a righteous judge and a caring mentor. And this expressed in the verse from Isaiah in the Haftarah of, of the week, the, this week of the portion of the Barim, which is the, uh, the, the Shabbat Hason, which is the Shabbat of vision. And I will restore your judges at first and your counselors as, as in the beginning. And so Rabbi Itzhak Ginsberg finishes off explaining that the ultimate judge and counselor will be Mashiach. And he, he, he is the perfect mentor. He's known as the Pele Yoetz, which is the wondrous counselor. And such a counselor is able to sense the wonder that is infused in every Jewish soul. So a good counselor is not only a person that can tap into the reality of the other person, to tap into what's going on in their life, their character traits, their personality, where they're coming from, what's going on, but they can also tap into this person's potential and God-given gifts. And he, allow, he helps that person see it and, and tap into that. So, so one manifestation of perceptive counseling is, sen is sensitive timing, says Rabbi Ginsberg. Says timing is very, very, very important. Like a perceptive counselor will know when to give the advice and when not to give the advice. It, it, there's time for everything. 
that when a person is going through a very hard time and he's in a very shocking moment in his life, it's not the time to give counsel. It's the time to listen to them. It's a time to, to tell them that you're there for them. It's a time to take care of them. But it's not a time to give counsel. You have to give time. Time, time heals. And once that person has been able to get over the first grieving process, the first uh, shock, uh, it takes sometimes two years, then the person can come and give counsel, but only when that person is ready to listen to it. And so someone with true perception will take note of one thing, his or her friend's current situation and understand another thing, that this may not be the right moment for the friend to accept his or her counsel, however good it may be. And in such a case, offering the advice at the right moment is crucial to the success. So it is the task of Mashiach, a wondrous counselor, to teach us how to incorporate perceptiveness into our own psyches. This is what Mashiach is going to be, the, the, the times of Mashiach is that we're going to be able to be perceptive, we're going to be able to understand and see more than what we have in front of us. And so the numerical value of the four letters of Mashiach, which are Mem, Shin, Yud, and Het, is 878. And this equals to the numerical value of the phrase Davar mitoch Davar, which means one thing from another, one thing from another. And so Mashiach is the ultimate perceptive individual and is just waiting for the right time to come to us. We just have to be ready. If the world is ready, he's here. He's in the, already ready to, to ring the doorbell. But we have to be ready. Okay? So I wish you a blessed week. I hope that we don't have to fast on Sunday, on Tisha B'Av. I hope Mashiach will be here. I hope the world is ready to receive this great, great uh, momentum, which is really why Hashem created the world, is for a moment like that and um, remember to live a little higher. Thank you.